Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some makeup tips that I've learned over the years, whether it be from makeup artists, from TikTok, from Instagram, that have really helped me in upping my makeup game. Some of these may seem really straightforward or like really small tweaks, but when you put them all together, it can make a really big difference on how your makeup wears and how your makeup looks. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Right, so I have the Catrice True Skin Foundation on right now and a little bit of brow pencil. That's all I've got on my face right now. And first we're gonna go in with concealer and I'm gonna use this side of my face to show you the way that I've learned to do it. I'm gonna use this side of my face to show you the way I've learned not to do it. And just to be totally clear, there's no wrong way to do makeup. If the way you're doing your makeup makes you feel good, if you like the way you're doing your makeup, then keep doing it that way. This is for people who, when they're done with their makeup, are like, why don't I like how this turned out? And they can't really put their finger on it. Maybe one of these tricks will help. All right, first things first is concealer. If you're anything like me and you kind of learned how to do your makeup with the first wave of YouTube influencers, the way that everyone was doing their concealer was like the Kim K under eye way like this, where it's a ton of product and like five shades lighter than your foundation. I find with this technique that it can really change the way that your whole foundation looks because you're almost using the same amount of concealer as you are foundation. So even if your foundation matches your skin tone, your concealer is really gonna brighten up that shade so significantly that it may look like it's not even a match anymore. As you can see, not only is there a lot of product sitting on my face right now, the color of my foundation looks completely different. This side looks like more of a match for my skin tone, whereas this side looks a lot lighter than my body because I went so many shades lighter with my concealer. Now the way that I've learned to do it is using a concealer, this is the Honest Concealer in the shade Sand, that's maybe one or two shades lighter than your foundation. And I really try and only put the concealer where I need it, which is right here in my inner corner. And I let it sit there for a few minutes before I blend it out so that I get the most coverage possible. And then on this side, I just blend it upwards to give my face that really lifted look. But as you can see, that brightened up my under eyes without completely changing the color of my skin because I only used a couple shades lighter than my foundation. I also kept it just to where I need it instead of just covering the whole center of my face. This side is looking pretty ashy and heavy. This side's still looking quite fresh and natural. All right, next up for contour. The way that I used to contour, I think the way that a lot of us were taught to contour is by going into the hollows of your cheek, sucking your cheeks in like this and putting the product in the hollows. Right there. So then I blend out right here in the hollows of my cheeks where I learned to do contour. It really just weighs my cheek down and the stark contrast between the contour and the concealer it just looks very unnatural and it just drags this whole side of my face down. Where I now use it is right underneath where my cheekbone is. I keep it up much higher and I keep it to this side of my face. I don't bring it in quite as far as I did almost to my mouth over here. When I blend it, I use patting motions and if I'm gonna blend it in any direction, it's going to be up. But because I'm not using that super bright concealer, there's not that stark contrast. And because I kept it up higher, it makes my cheekbones appear higher and this whole side of my face looks more lifted than this side. All right, next up for setting my concealer. On this side, I'm gonna do the way that I learned back in the day, which is baking. In order to keep your makeup in place all day, a lot of people used to bake, which is applying a ton of setting powder with a damp beauty sponge letting it sit and then kind of dusting the excess away. So while that's sitting, I'm gonna show you the way that I've learned to still get the longevity that you get out of this for like an event or for when you want your makeup to last a really long time, but have it be a little bit more friendly to the under eyes and not look quite so drying. That is using a velour puff in place of a beauty sponge and using a pressed powder in place of a loose powder just because you use a bit less product. So I put the product right here on the velour sponge and then I pat off some excess onto my hand and then I go in with what's left on the puff and just gently press. So on this side I've set with the velour puff. It's still airbrushed everything, it's still set everything, but it doesn't give me the dry, crepey look that this side gives me. Now that it's been sitting there for a minute, I'm gonna dust off the excess, but my face over here just feels really tight and like I'm wearing a ton of makeup. So that's the result from a distance. This may look like it's airbrushed, but when I get really up close, 
We'll see if you can see that this side looks really crusty and cakey, and this side looks really flawless and natural. All right, next up is blush. The way that I used to apply my blush is, like I think a lot of us are taught, and that's like right on the apples of my cheeks. So I would smile and put it right here. The problem with that is that when I'm smiling and it's on the apple of my cheek, it looks great. But when I'm not smiling, it's completely dragging my face down. So what I've learned to do is instead of applying my blush with a smile and putting it on the apple of my cheek, I don't smile and I just place it where I want the apple of my cheek to appear to be, which is right up here closer to my cheekbone. And instead of using the circular motions, I'm using patting motions so that I'm only applying a little bit of product. I'm not disturbing the foundation underneath and I'm slowly building up the color. On this side, I will use the center of my eye as like a line down my face and try and keep most of the product on this side of the line. Sometimes I'll bring it in for like that sun-kissed look, but I'll just take a tiny bit of product, whatever's left on my brush, and not add more product to my brush. So the majority is gonna be right up here to the right of that line. Next up, let's talk eyeshadow. So on this side, I'm gonna show you what I used to do when I was learning to do my makeup. I used to take just any transition color. Let's go with, I'm using the color Pop Your Golden Palette. Let's just go with this transition color right here. And I would watch tutorials that would say, put this in your crease. I would take my brush and find the socket of my eye and move it back and forth right there in the socket of my eye. Because technically, this is where my crease is. Now this might work for some, depending on your eye shape, but if you have an eye shape like mine where it's either hooded or partially hooded, when you're looking down, applying these colors, it looks great. But as soon as I look up and look straight ahead with my lid relaxed, almost all of that product is covered with my hooded eye. So it almost looks like I'm not wearing any eyeshadow on this side. So let me show you on this side what I've learned to do with that same transition color we started with. Instead of looking down in my mirror, I look straight ahead into my mirror and then I place the crease where I want it to be rather than where it is, which is much higher. And create an illusion that my crease is up here when I'm actually just completely making it up. And when I look straight ahead with my eyes relaxed, that crease color is still visible. And it's the same deal with the lid space. So I'm gonna take this bright shimmery color just so we can really see it all over my lid on this side just all over where my natural lid is. And I'm gonna keep it right there on my natural lid and not take it any higher. So if I'm keeping this only where my natural lid is, that's what it would look like. It looks like a really small lid space and a really low crease because it is. And now on this side, I'm gonna show you what I usually do with a different color because I don't really love how that color looks. I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna take it all over my natural lid space like I did on the other side. But then I'm gonna take it up quite a bit more to into my natural crease area kind of have it meet with the new crease that i created that's well above my natural crease most of that area is covered when my eyes are open with my hooded lid it doesn't look like i have shimmer going up too far but when i close my eyes it looks a lot better because it makes that lid space look larger and my crease look higher Whereas on this side, again, it just looks like a really tiny lid space and a cramped crease. Again, really small changes, but can make a really big difference when you put them all together. So I'm, I don't have a whole lot in terms of brows, so I'm just gonna go in with my NYX brow gel on both sides. Next up is eyeliner. And I'm gonna show you on this side the way that I used to do my eyeliner. And what I did was create a wing with my eyes looking down into the mirror. As I'm looking down, it looks like a nice symmetrical dramatic wing. As soon as I look up and relax my eye, the shape that my eye is when my eyes are open with that hood coming down changes the angle of the wing and it makes my hooded eyes look way more hooded than they actually are as the hood of my eye is like collapsing on top of the wing. The way that I've learned to do it is instead of looking down into the mirror as I'm doing my eyeliner, I bring the mirror to where I'm looking straight ahead as I do my eyeliner and I use that line right here where my hood is as like my no-go zone. So this line right there where my fold is, I'm not gonna draw on top of that. Where that hood line is, I'm gonna create a line between where I created the wing line and my lash line. And now when my eyes are relaxed and I'm looking straight ahead, you can see the entire wing. I feel like that's the goal kind of as we age is to keep your face nice and relaxed when you're doing your makeup. Cause a lot of the times without even realizing it, when we're doing our eyeshadow, we're like going like this and putting the eyeshadow on. We're doing our blush, we're lifting our cheeks up rather than having your face look how it looks and then applying the makeup where it's flattering with your face relaxed. I know this one's a little controversial, 
but I always used to curl my eyelashes and then go in with my mascara. You can see my eyelashes are nice and curled now and I'm gonna go in with a heavy coat of mascara. What I've come to realize is that I like thicker mascaras. I like mascaras that pack a big punch that have a thicker formula and I have naturally very straight lashes. So even if I curl them to the gods before I put on mascara, the weight of the mascara inevitably pulls them down. And it looks the same way that it would look if I didn't curl my lashes at all. All right, now on this side, I'm gonna go in without curling my lashes as a first step and just apply a nice heavy coat of mascara. All right, while I wait for that to dry down, I'm gonna go in on the lips. I've always wanted plumper lips. I've always considered lip filler, but I'm too nervous to do it and pull the trigger. So my solution is overlining. And when I first heard of overlining, I was like, this is great. I can just look like I have bigger lips and let's do it, let's go for it. And I took it quite literally. So I would slightly overline outside of my entire lip line. All right, so that is slightly overlining my whole lip line evenly. And it doesn't look terrible, but I always kind of felt uncomfortable. Like it was really obvious I was overlining my lips until I learned on TikTok, Makeup by Mario shared this tip, where you just wanna overline the top middle and the bottom middle of your lip and then keep this side and this side true to your natural lip line. The bottom center, you're overlining just a little bit and then you are meeting up with your natural lip line. So when you're halfway to the corner of your mouth, you're now following your natural lip line. So you still get that nice pouty look in the center of your lip, but it's just in the top, middle, and the bottom. So even up close, it doesn't really look like you're overlining your lips. Whereas on this side, up underneath here, and all the way down here, it's very obvious that you're overlining. Now that my mascara is dry, I'm taking clean eyelash curlers. There's absolutely no residue on the eyelash curlers. My mascara is completely dry, and I'm just gonna gently tap, 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 and curl my dried mascara. Again, a pretty simple change, but you can see my lashes on this side are a lot more visible, and this side, the lashes have already kind of fallen down from the original curl before I put on the mascara. And that is everything. Those are the two sides of my face and the tips and tricks that I have learned along the way that have really helped me improve my makeup. If you like this style of video, give it a thumbs up so I know you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here and I will see you in my next one.